So we're going to talk about grades. Very good. Uh, basically, uh, this is just a quick talk about uh, float-based grid systems. So uh, there's tons of frameworks out there, like more than a person could probably even know. But uh, it's interesting in that there's generally some like basic rules that outline how grid systems operate, and there's they could be categorized into a few different types. We're going to talk about kind of what those types are, some of the costs and benefits, because they they all have kind of these. Uh, they're basically like unique individuals with their own eccentricities and own, own kind of weird uh, best case scenarios, um, as well as strengths and weaknesses. So uh, I also uh, kind of made up a grid system. So obviously I'm a big fan, but I'm pretty biased, so I'll talk about that too. Um, so here's our awesome site, right, that we're going to make. It's talking about our pair, August pair tag. And, you know, we've got a couple like modules you can see. We've got um, a text column over here with our with our ingredients. We have like our description. We have got you know some details. Uh, this this kind of image caption thing, and then some center text and our little um, header nav thing up there as well. So if we take a look at this, um, we actually see oh this is all based on a grid, right? So we can see things like um, our text columns are two two columns and a, what is it five columns over there. Um, we have our little three column module for this. So you can see that the exterior box hyper extends beyond the containing grid so that it actually accommodates the gutter so that the text can sit in the gutter so that's consistent with. Um, and then you can see that our image actually only goes uh, what is 10 out of our 12 columns here so that we have a little bit of a space for our uh, user module up at the top. Uh, so that's what a grid looks like. Uh, very common, you'll see um, most grid systems are going to have like variables that you can pass in. We're going to talk about that in a second. Uh, but most grid systems uh, follow uh, what's like a 12 column default. 12 is just a nice number. It's divisible by both 3 and 4, which are column layouts, uh, or com uh, common layouts. And 2. Uh, and 2 as well. And 6. Uh, yes. Um, <laughs> anyways. So. Grid systems will typically, especially if they're like a SAS-based system, you're going to be passing in a few metrics into them. Um, specifically, uh, on average, these are column count, which is what we discussed, usually defaults to 12. Um, there's a couple other ones that you can achieve, like if you're trying to do, like the newthoughtbot.com website has like a, a, I believe it's a three, five, or it's a, it's a five column grid because it's a two, three, which is a weird um, kind of asymmetrical grid, but has its, has its uh, nice qualities. Uh, we also have the gutter width, which is the space between each of the columns. Uh, this is handled differently depending on the grid system as to, to how that's calculated. But um, usually, on most systems, you're going to be passing in like a static value, so something like 20 pixels or you know 1m or whatever the particular measurement is. And then you're going to have the last one is, is a, typically is a max row width. This is the kind of least consequential of all the variables. But basically, it says like if you keep stretching and stretching, like don't make it like giant. Uh, telethon or you know uh, jumbotron screen wide like once you hit say like tw uh, uh, 1280 pixels just stop you know and that's just handled with a max width on what's either referred to as a, a container or a row which is the entire encapsulating object Oop. oh I had little things set up so here's our column <laughs> count here's our uh, grid uh, gutter width so you can see this is what all the gutter widths are and then that's our max object. And you'll see that this, this hyper extends beyond the columns themselves and also includes a gutter on either side. Well, if the column, width, column count is fixed and the gutter width is fixed and the column width is fixed, mm -hmm. why do you need a maximum row width? Won't it always have a default maximum row width? So the column count is fixed, but typically in most systems, they will only have a max row width. They will not have a column width. That there are systems that do that, uh, where you'll, it'll say, "What do you want the max column width to be?" And but ultimately, what it usually will end up doing is that it just goes into the back end, uh, calculates that plus the plus all the gutters, and then figures out what the what the row width is there. And ultimately, that'd be the difference between a fixed versus a fluid grid, right? Mm -hmm. So one that's responsive would be fluid, and they're percentage based. Yeah. Because you could you could have static values for all these things, right? And that this is just you know like a, like an old 960 uh, website, right? Where it's just like this is a 960 website. It will only be a 960 website. Deal with it, SDFU. Um, and in that scenario, 
uh, you, you wouldn't have any real variables, everything would be fixed, and then you could make very particular assertions about how big everything is going to be. So I gave some names to these grids, a little ridiculous and goofy, but it's easier to talk about them. So this is a half gutter grid. This is a really common grid. This is actually one of the earliest like float-based grids. It's, um, foundation when they first implemented their like for a very long time they used a, a half gutter grid and it basically makes the assertion that each object is going to have half of a gutter on either side so that when it touches another object they both come together and make a single gutter um, and then the idea being that this is usually handed, handled by an invisible containing object that has padding and it uses a half gutter padding on either side uh, to push everything in um, so we can see that here uh, each of these is going to have, it's a little hard to see on the monitor, but there's, there's a half a gutter here, 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 and it goes all the way across. Um, one of the uh, benefits is that it's just dead simple. It's like very, very easy. You can use both percentage-based and fixed values for the gutter widths. So you could say 2% or you could say uh, like a different metric, um, like a percentage. The other... Uh, weird part about them is that they basically are like a contained system so it's like everybody uh, has to obey those rules if you're going to be if you're going to be inside the grid then like you always have to have a padding because one object is not going to by itself bring that gutter to the table it's always going to have half and it's going to need that other object to kind of combine and create a single gutter um, and then they also have to have a um, if you see here, there's like a secondary line, right? Because it, they have to have a container element which is on the exterior bringing that other half a, half a gutter. Uh, next up we have percentage-based systems. Percentage-based systems are a little bit different because very typically they will have, they will not have a uh, gutter on the exterior sides. So you can imagine that if you squished your browser in and, and you know, brought it all the way in, like this first object would be directly touching the edge of the monitor, or the, uh, the window. Um, and then the way they handle gutters typically is with margin instead of padding. So what they will do is they say, basically, margin right, gutter, and then their gutter value. Um, and so you can see here, this object has a margin on its right hand side, which is pushing the, the objects farther out. Um, one of the consequences of that is that the last object can't have that margin, otherwise it would push the whole thing down. So what they have to do is they have to do uh, nth child selectors. Um, where it says, oh, are you, how many columns are you can have in your, in your grid, which is already like a big assumption. And then you have to say, okay, nth child selector that, no margin. Uh, this is a system that Neat uses, so like if you've used things like Omega, this is a little bit of why that, why that is. Um, next up, we have push left grids, which I'm a fan of. Um, these are the basically la last type of grid system, which is going to be using calc. Um, these do have a container object, so you can see our, our row object here has a gutter on either side as well. Um, they are interesting in that they don't have to have a row value, or like a row container, because of the way that the margins are calculated. Um, if we look at one of these objects, the object itself has a, uh, it's called a push left grid because it's pushing a margin to the left hand side. Uh, margins collapse on, in on each other in uh, vertical, but actually in horizontal they don't. And so what happens is it will just push away from its containing object. And so you can see here is the margin on this side. Very similarly, the next object is pushing away from the first object and so on and so on. And the cool thing about the way uh, calc operates is that we're able to determine exactly how wide everything should be so that we don't have to worry about that last uh, gutter value because the widths dictate that this object is just going to get to this point and then stop. And it doesn't need to, it's not going to try to expand or anything like that. Um, and the way that's calculated is with this crazy uh, calculation here. We can see this is our width operation for, and it's utilizing calc. And it basically says, uh, grab me the percentage of the column ratio. So this would be like, you know, two, two fifths or whatever. And then say, okay, that's how wide that column should be without uh, ignoring the gutter. And then subtract one gutter from it because it has one gutter on one side. So we know that it needs to be not that. And then we take this, which is basically doing an operation that says, 
how wide is the object as a whole? Um, and so how much, you can imagine like the last gutter is kind of shared, the, the width of the last gutter is shared by all the other columns and each one kind of like a, like a, uh, like a voting system, they kind of have to go, okay, how, how, big, or how big is your column? And he says, oh, I'm, I'm two fifths. It's like, okay, well you have to have two fifths of that gutter. Um, and so each one of those is gonna divvy them up among all the remaining columns. And so as it expands out, it just ultimately knows that uh, each of the, the widths have already accommodated for that gutter, so there's nothing that actually needs to define it or physically push it out. That's it, thank you. Good game, well played. <laughs> That last one, it gets very esoteric, and so it is. It is nice in that um, some of the some of the other systems they're so like a, especially like the the half gutter grids and things like that. They're so simple that it's you can make a library that does it, you know. And because libraries are fun and people like libraries, but like ultimately it's so simple that like the fact that it's a system isn't really helping. You. Like you could just hand off it much easier, right? Um, you can imagine just doing like a oh, percentage width, 25, padding, you know, some amount. And that's just as easy as like utilizing a library and leveraging this. But like, you know, that's super annoying. Nobody wants to write that. And so calc is, these calc operations are very well suited for like, this is a library that will systemically solve your problems. Um, another benefit that I didn't talk about was the idea like uh, a push left grid actually is very good about Oh, I got some objects in here. Some of them I'm, use, I'm using the grid system for, but some of them I'm not. You know, maybe there's like some flexbox stuff going on in here too. And it just kind of plays nicely because the objects, it doesn't rely on like um, a single object like determining its own width and its own gutter. It doesn't like worry about everybody else. It doesn't say like, oh, uh, like, and this is the weakness like I mentioned with the, especially with the half gutter grid is it says like everybody kind of has to use that system. Like it's not good in a, in a big app where you're like, no, every time you do a layout, you don't get to write your own layouts. You have to use the system because we have these half gutters and they're this weird thing. And if you don't use the system, then it all falls apart, right? Um, or you end up with weird values, just kind of like uh, mismatching. And so this is very good about like, use it if you want it, but then other times if you're like, no, I'd just rather hand off of this layout, it doesn't like mess with the system, which is cool. So how would you handle in this? I, I feel like I always come across this when there's margins on the, the very edges. Like if mm -hmm. you want something to flush all the way left, but then you still want to use the grid. Mm -hmm. So you want an image that like, touches the end of the browser, but you still want like two pieces to be on the grid. So in reality, I would just handwrite it most of the time. Because like in that scenario, like I would typically be in a situation where I just want like everything to be flush, in which case it's just easier to write like with 25%, with 75%, right? And everything does that. Um, another way of handling that is by saying, oh, you know, it's that first object, I want that to be, uh, and this is what kind of goes back to what I was saying about like, it's cool. It's a cool system in that it plays nicely with others. You could say have an object that's like, oh, I want this object to be full width, but then I have a column of text next to it, right? So I have a big image. I want that to be uh, touching the side of the browser. So that's just with uh, twenty-five percent, right? But then I could use this for the text object and say, no, for you, you're supposed to be like basically seventy-five percent or whatever. And the calculations work out that that actually would still exist in that space and be and be having those gutters on either side. Um, alternatively, you can do, I have it in, I have it in uh, CASP, which is the, the system that I was working on, um, where you can define like a hacky little row width that has negative margins. So basically it has like, um, it, the width is actually like 100% plus the gutters. Mm -hmm. And then it has a negative margin on, one, on the left side that is one gutter width. So you can imagine it's superseding so that everything else can still have the gutters and everything lines up. So it kind of goes like out and then back in. Does calc work in all modern browsers? And that's a CSS3 thing? Or not? Yeah, so calc is a just generally awesome thing. It allows you to do things that are kind of um, reliant on the system, like the browser's interpretation of it. And so you can do cool things. Um, Browsers actually have fantastic support for calc now. 
now's kind of like the right time to be moving towards it. Um, I think it's very phenomenal in that you can do, this is basically the only way you can do like deterministic values like 1M and then mix those with percentages on the fly and just do all kinds of crazy stuff. And it's like you can throw like um, VH and VW uh, metrics in there as well and it'll just figure the whole thing out. Um, but and yeah, to answer your question, like I think we could, you could look at the TNIUs, but like every major browser has been using it and uh, supporting it for a while, as well as like a few versions of IE back at this point. So I think nine even supports it. Um, the only kind of gotcha is that anytime you're going to be asking, hey browser, do some math for me, it's going to go cool, I'll round the crap out of these numbers and I'm not going to really tell you what I'm, how I'm thinking about it, right? Because that's always going to be the case even with values like M values. Like sometimes it's going to have to say, listen, you want to do like 0. .00007 pixels. I'm just not going to do that, right? And the browser's not going to tell you that. It's not really going to, you know, you're just going to all of a sudden your layout might break and you'll be like, why? But the one nice thing about that is like, say it rounds all these values up. Right, it, right, like it says like, okay, all these width values, like, I don't know, this is super weird. So I'm just gonna round up. Because of the fact that this space is not occupied by anything, it can go, it has a little bit of wiggle room. Like it can kind of bump out and you imagine like this is like, oh, this is an extra pixel too wide. Doesn't matter, you can just take up that space. Whereas like a lot of those other grids, and especially the, um, the uh, well actually both of the other systems, like if, if it decides it's gonna round in a funky way, it's gonna break your layout because it's gonna push one of those objects over. Just hands. <laughs> Thanks, Will. Thank you, guys.